afternoon, everyone, and we are going to present our interesting research on compression. It is universally acknowledged that compression is now widely used, and such as we can find them in in cell phone and run length encoding, etc. And due to its popularity, there are many different software to support its development. And as we can see in the PowerPoint, such as WinSip and Deflate, etc. So. How compression is done, and now I'm going to, start to tell you how the process of compressing digital information. There are several methods of data compression, and the first one is encoding. There are two steps in encoding. To encoding, the first is source coding, and this step is aimed at removing the redundant bits. And the second step is channel coding, and this step aims at removing the error. And the second method is the pattern recognition. In a piece of information, the, the program will try to recognize the similar pattern so as to reduce the bits used in encoding. And the last method is by linear prediction. The, the program will try to predict the information following so that they can reduce the bits used in expressing the information so that the file can be compressed. So now I'm going to tell you what is lossy and lossless compression. The definition of lossy compression is to discuss some of the data in the data encoding method. And I'm going to illustrate the lossy compression by image. We have several cones that will detect different colors, such as blue cones and green cones. However, we have fewer blue cones than red or green cones, so that we are more sensitive to green and yellow lights. And under these circumstances, we can selectively filter out less sensitive colors so that the file size can be compressed and we can use fewer bits to represent this file size. And the second one is the lossless compression. The first type of lossless compression is RLE, which is, which is run length encoding. In the PowerPoint, you can see that there are many letters AAABBB. And if we use this encoding, we can compress them into numbers and letters, such as 10A, 2B, 1C, etc. However, for some files, some files may not may be enlarged due to its small size. However, since most of the files are very large, and so finally they can still be compressed. And the second one is the LC compression. This compression mainly highly influenced by the number of color used, which means that if the image is more colorful, we need to use more bits to represent it. If the colorful image represents by smaller bits and the color proper, the image quality will be lower, and you can see that in the PowerPoint. And in this table, we can see the compare and contrast of the lossy and lossless compression. For the recovery of data, lossy can be exactly recovered to the original one, but not for the lossless. And for the reversibility, lossy is not reversible, but lossless is reversible. So after knowing more about the lossy and also lossless compression, let's take a look at three different types of compression, uh, which are the image files, audio files, as well as video files. So for image compression, we have some methodologies for lossless compressions, such as uh, the runfling encoding mentioned previously, as well as the deflation. While for a lossy compression, we can reduce the color space to most common colors in the image or use the transform coding. So for common formats that are very well known for lossless compression, we have raw, TIFF, P uh, PNG, as well as bitmap uh, picture. While for a lossy compression, we have JPEG as well as GIF. So image compression, uh, for image compression, scalability is very important. So scalability is eventually the quality reduction achieved by manipulation of bitstream of the file. So for this scalability, we have three different prog progresses. For the quality progressive, the bitstream are su successively refined the constructed, uh, reconstructed image. But for the resolution progressive, so the first the encoding is being done on the lower image resolution. Then it is compared with the higher resolution one. Then the difference in between is being encoded. Afterwards is the component progressives. So actually the compression will be done first on the gray and then the colors. As for audio compressions, 
um, the principle is the same for both lossless compression as well as lossless compression, which is the linear predictive coding. So it actually estimates the formants, intensity, and also frequency of the remaining bus of the audio files. So for common formats that we know from lossless compression, we have FLAC as well as MPEG for ALS. But for lossy one is the most commonly used formats, which are MP3 and WMA. Last but not least, for the video compression. So most video compressions are being done lossy, and lossy, but DVDs usually use lossless MPEG-2 video codecs for its encoding. Uh, and because video is a three-dimensional array, so actually they have two, mention, two dimensions for spatial. It is the horizontal as well as the vertical. Well, another dimension is for the time domain. So actually for video, it is a three-dimension of 3D encoding. Okay, now so let me talk about the advantage of compression. And they include reducing the file size and to ensure security. And using compression is easier to use and more convenient. So firstly, using compression can reduce the file size of the data. Compression assists us in reducing the use of hard disk, hard disk space and data transfer on the internet so that the transferring progress will be much faster. Secondly, is the compression is more convenient and easier to use. Users, users are able to handle multiple files at the same time, so it would be less complicated to handle a large amount of data. The next advantage is to ensure security. Users can choose whether or not to add a password to the file while they are compressing the file. So to put it simply, without a password, users cannot unzip the file. This can ensure the information in a file is protected in any network environment. So now let's move on to the application of compression. Um, data, particular tests or graphics, usually contains uh, repeated sequences of identical information. So compression works by replacing many characters of repeated information with a few characters and transmitting only one copy of repeated sequences of data. So in that word, a great deal of space can be saved without affecting the original information. Another application of compression is run length encoding. This means large runs of consecutive identical data values are replaced by a simple code with the data value and length of the run. And it is often used to optimize the disk space. Since 2003, cell phone has been one of the popular products in the market. With the advanced technology nowadays, new functions of taking photos, videos, MP3, and applications are introduced. The capacity of digital content becomes greater, and experts claim that the capacity is double than before. So compression becomes a necessity in daily life. So what is the future expectations of compression? The use of compression may still gain popularity consistently in the future. And many companies are now scrambling to take a corner of the market and like Hong Kong or US, and they are trying to implement new and sophisticated compression software. Whether or not a compression data can be compressed again still remains a moot question. But after all, compression mechanisms will sure be emerge and improve in the future. That's the end of our presentation. Thank you. Okay. Well, as a, very good. As a matter of fact, HK, HKUST is one of the world leading expert group in uh, video compression, as I mentioned in class. Um, this is very good uh, comprehensive review about compression. It helps us remember a lot about lossy and lossless compression with some additional information such as one name and coding. It's nice. You can include that later. Okay, good.